campaigners have criticised rail bosses after it was confirmed that some outdated pacer trains could still be operating next year. The trains were introduced as a temporary measure in the 1980s and won't meet new disability access laws. There have been repeated promises that they would be scrapped by the end of this year. But problems with some of their replacements means that pacers could keep running. Caroline Bilton has this report. We were told time and again it was the end of the line for the pacer. Right now, we have knackered old trains in the north of England, the pacer trains, that were no more than bus bodies bolted onto train wheels. Replacing the ancient and unpopular pacer carriages with new and modern trains. The pacers are exclusive to the north, but they're noisy, bumpy, leaky and prone to breaking down. Every time I get a train from here, it's always a pacer train and it's always old-fashioned and smelly and noisy. Should be changed as quick as possible. They're not very clean and they smell a lot and it just puts a downer on your day when you have to get on one. We were promised they would be replaced by the end of 2019, but it's been revealed they're even going to be late to the scrap heap. Speaking last week, Northern Rail wouldn't be drawn on a date for their demise. Now that we've got the new trains in place, we can now plan that first retirement of the pacer and then we can finalise our plans for December. So we haven't decided anything yet, we're still working it through and as we finalise that plan, we'll be able to communicate it. And today, the Department for Transport has confirmed some pacers may continue on the network into the beginning of next year. I'm afraid it's another broken promise. It might be the manufacturer's fault, but this is the problem with the rail industry. They all point the finger at each other, and you just get the feeling that their focus is not on the north of England. They are in the process of being replaced by this new fleet of trains, costing £500 million. Nine have come into service today, but a delay in manufacturing means the 2019 deadline will be missed. One of the main reasons for taking them out of service was because they did not comply with new disability access laws. Technically, they'll be illegal next year. They, we were promised that they'd be rid of them by now. They've had 25 years of this deadline and still this is causing us a massive problem. It's very frustrating. So for now, the wait continues. These rickety old trains will be bumping along for a while yet. Caroline Bilton, BBC Look North. Caroline, thank you. Well, we did ask the Department for Transport for a minister to speak to us, but nobody was available. But before we came on the air, I spoke to Emma Hardy, who is the MP for Hull West and Hessel. Emma Hardy, putting up with the paces for a bit longer is not really a problem, is it? I mean, there's still a train. Yes, but they're a train that isn't simply good enough. I mean, the other day I was riding on one and one of the passengers said to me, they rode on it all the time, and they said, do you know what we call it? I said, what? They said, the bone rattler. I mean, this is how local people refer to them. It's simply unacceptable that we are waiting around for new trains when the rest of the country seem to be getting upgrades and we're left waiting in Hull. You say that, but uh, a lot of the north are getting new trains from today. They're already on, on the tracks. 2,000 extra services, the government say as well. Um, it's all good news. This is good news, but what about the people of Hull? Once again, we've been let down by this government. They seem to be ignoring the fact well, we're no, here. No, no, it's not the government. Not... It's not the government. It's a small mechanical design and... fault, which is which is will, will be sorted out. It's one of those things. <laughs> I don't think so, Peter. It's one of those things. Why isn't it happening elsewhere? It shows and it illustrates the lack of concern that this government has for areas like Hull. And we're not actually even getting all of the new trains. We're getting refurbished trains. They seem to be putting the new trains in other areas of the country. We're in desperate need of not the just new trains, the... but electrification of our our railway. Yeah, well, We've got a climate Labour, change Labour had a, crisis. Labour had a chance to do the electrification. Uh, you had plenty of time to do that. You didn't do it. You can't start blaming Labour for something when this government's been in power for nine years. That's too old, Peter. We need to move on with the a new argument. Is, the government is investing... We need electrification of our railway if we are going to deliver the on is, the climate change promises that this government have said they're the going to. The government is investing over £13 billion improving transport. Transport for the North has been created with a £70 billion investment for the railways. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that, does it? <laughs> well, if it doesn't get much better, I'd like to see it get worse. Transport for the North, I mean, what powers has that? It's a talking shop. It's not like Transport for London when they have a budget and they have power and they have autonomy. Yeah, but transport is... the North is doing what other than offering us jam tomorrow? Well, maybe you and should, be, maybe you should be more, more positive. 
I think I should be more realistic, Peter, and my job is not to go and make apologies for the government's failure to deliver right. on railway. My Bor job is to argue for a better rail system Boris, for the people of Hull. Boris Johnson had a meeting with Andrew Percy six weeks ago where Mr Johnson gave a commitment to northern regeneration. Now, you want northern regeneration, so I assume you're backing Mr Johnson. <laughs> I think Mr Johnson gave a commitment to everybody. Apparently he's promised three people the job of Chancellor. So I don't hold much credit on what Mr Johnson is promising any member of Parliament at the moment. But what I will promise is that I will continue to fight okay. for a better rail system for the people of Hull. We'll see what people think. Uh, very good to talk to you, uh, Emma Hardy. Thank you very much indeed.